Today we're going to be making a version of this hive. This is Parkinson hive, so we're going to start with the stand, which is a 2x6 and a couple 2x4s, and we'll get that base set up right now. Okay, the first thing we make is the side rails for the base, and that's out of a 2x6. Get the straightest one you can. And you're going to cut a 20 degree angle, so you measure 47 inches and 49 inches, and you go all the way to the edge here. I didn't do that here, so it's important that you do all the way to the edge. You get a 20 degree line there, or roughly a 20 degree line, close enough. Or you can use, if you have a miter saw or a radial arm saw, just set it to 20 degrees, and that's what I'm going to do here, and it'll make that 20 degree cut for you. Okay, now with the rail cut, what we're going to do is we're going to use that to mark a line on what we're calling the back legs here. So we mark a line exactly halfway. We mark halfway in the 2x4 and then we use this 2x6 as a guide. And what we're going to do is draw a line and that'll be a 20 degree line on each side. And then that's what your line will look like and there's uh, it's about 48 and 5 eighths on this side and 47 and uh, 7 sixteenths on this side. There's a typo in the manual, so I'll fix that. And that's your 20 degree line, and then we'll cut that. Now we mark the front legs. That's 32 and a half inches on the short side. We're just gonna cut a 20 degree angle there, and we'll make two of these. All right, once you get that first one cut, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over, line them up here, and then you're gonna come down here and make a straight cut. And then we'll have two front legs. All right, and then you've got everything you need to assemble your sides. So that's the next step. Okay, the next step is to assemble the sides, and there's a left and a right side, so you gotta make sure you're doing this the right way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure down from the high point on the back leg, seven and three quarters, and put a mark. And we're gonna lay that board right on that mark. The end of that board goes right on that mark. Focus. And then on the other side, on the front side, we're going to make two marks at seven and three quarters. Those are right there and right there. And so what we're doing is we're getting the, the board on the front lined up perfectly so that it's seven and three quarters. And then we're going to adjust that back leg. Now we're going to glue and screw this on. We're going to put some glue on that front rail, align the wood. And then install three screws, which have a shear weight of 80 pounds. And so that will give you 240 pounds of shear weight on this front leg. And for this, I've always used deck screws. Um, they're made for outside. And if you want them to stay about an inch away from the end so you don't have to split it or worry about split the wood splitting with those. And that should get you the front all lined up, and then we'll go put the screws in the back. Now for the back, what we do is we put one screw in, and then we're going to take a bunch of measurements to make sure that we've got our legs square with each other. And then what you want to do is measure, and you want the same distance all the way up those legs, and depending on where you put that screw up there, it should be about 37 and 5 eighths all the way along the, the length of those legs. Now mine came out to 37 and a half, uh, the distance between there and there, all the way along. And so that's fine, it just means that I'm, you know, an eighth inch off there, which is fine. We're not landing a rover on Mars, we're building a beehive. So once I've got it even, the, the distance between the front leg, the back leg and the front leg is even all the way along, then I'm going to put the last two screws in there. Okay, and here's pro tip number one of the day. You're going to have it a left and a right half. And so you can't make two of these exactly the same. You have to make one half and then the other half. So the easiest way to do that is line up your front legs, line up your beam like that, and you don't have to do any measuring on the second one. You just line it up with the first one and put the screws in. For the rear leg on that second one, you still do have to measure down um, seven and three quarters, mark it, and then put that first screw in and then measure the distance between and make it make sure it's the same. All right, and if you did everything right, that should be 37 and a half or the same 
dimension between those legs as between those legs. When you flip it over, you should have something that matches identical. All right, and there we go. We've got the rails and the legs in place. So now it's time to just cut the reinforcements and put our base together. Now we're going to cut the cross braces, and one of the cross braces is going to be leftover um, leg material with that treated lumber. And they're going to be 22 and 3 quarter inches. And it's important that they're exactly 22 and 3 quarter inches wide. So when you're marking the line, make sure you mark the line and then cut on the other side of that line. All right, now we're going to assemble the cross braces. And I want to show you what it looks like here. So that the, it's laying on its side. We're going to put this front cross brace right here. Now we measure up either 13 inches or 14 inches. And the distance you measure up depends on the amount of foam you're going to have underneath here for insulation. If you're using one inch foam, you measure up 14 insulation. 14 inches. I'm using two inch foam underneath for insulation, so I'm going to measure up 13 inches. And so the two by four will go here, and then in winter the foam will slide right underneath here and rest on this two by four. Now another thing is I'm going to use plexiglass, so I'm going to slide this out so it's offset by the amount of the plexiglass here, so that when we frame in the window we have uh, that offset that we need. Now with that cross brace in place on the front, we're going to add a cross brace on the back. Now technically it doesn't matter where this cross brace goes, um, but you should measure up the same distance for this cross brace as you did for the one in front. And the primary reason for that is when you're leveling the hive, you know that those things are perfectly level and you can lay a level across them to help you get a nice level hive location. So that's really the only reason that you do that. And I also use the treated lumber here because this is the 2x4, the cross brace, that's going to get the most wind, rain, snow. Um, the others are protected basically from the hive, so this is the one that, where you should use that uh, treated lumber. Okay, now this top cross brace is important because your insulation is going to slide right in here. And so the distance between this angle right here of this 2x6 and this 2x4 has to be just about an eighth inch or quarter inch bigger than your insulation. So since I'm using two inch insulation, this needs to be about two and an eighth, two and a quarter, which makes this about two and a half here. So measure appropriately and then drill and glue that in place. Okay, now we flip the hive stand over and we mark 13 inches up and then we're gonna align this cross brace and we'll screw that in. Now that you've got the front one, you only put one screw in because you're going to have to adjust the back and get that all set up. And then you do the same thing here. You measure 13 inches up and you put your cross brace in place and screw that in place. Alright, and then we're going to measure and mark for this top cross brace. Again, we just put one screw in there so we can adjust it easy if we need to. Okay, then what we do is we stand it up, make sure all the legs our level we don't have any wobbles when we're sitting on a flat surface and once we've got it then we'll add those last few screws and shore everything up okay one little pro tip here when you're putting these screws in what you want to do is screw them in at an angle going up the reason is that the water will drip down and drip down if you screw them in the other way the water drips down and in and kind of sits there and rests so it's just a little trick to help those screw holes not be as problematic and then obviously that's why we put these screw holes on the inside so that they're not exposed to water. But there we are, our hive stand is mostly finished. We've got the end cap to do and we're going to test it quick. All right, here's a little preview of what it's going to look like with a frame holder in it. So that's what it'll look like. There'll be just a little tiny gap there. Go across, little tiny gap here. There you go. You've got a base that holds frame holders. Okay, next up we're going to install the plexiglass viewing window. And so if you're going to cut the plexiglass, what you want to do is run it backwards through a table saw. And um, that'll cut the plastic without breaking it or chipping it. So you're basically kind of grinding it away. That seems to work the best. And you'll have the right size piece of plexiglass. Okay, next you're going to pre-trail just a little hole, it's big enough for the screw, 
in each corner, just one in each of the upper corners. And now what we're going to do is we're going to countersink that hole slightly with a bigger bit. We're going to take a 5 16 bit and just take a couple of rotations so that the head of the screw can sink in there and be flush. Okay, here's how you countersink. Just go real slow, real light. Okay, now for the plexiglass, if you can get an 11 and a half inch piece, um, what you want to do is align it with the bottom of the rail here, and then go up, and this should be um, a couple inches down. Depending on the width of the plexiglass, the length down will be different. Now you'll only need this screw and this one over here, and make sure you get the any protective um, coatings off before you finish this up because what we're going to do is we're going to frame this in, pre-drill holes and screw it in to secure this all. Okay now we're going to start framing in the door and installing this first piece is kind of important so it should be so that it covers this bottom cross brace just a little bit and the bottom of this plexiglass just a little bit so that if we turn around and look on the inside you can see that it's got just a little bit of plexiglass there and it covers the wood all the way along there. So this is going to be our bottom. Okay, now this top cross brace goes an inch below the front edge. And so you put that in place. And I'm going to show you a mistake that I made and a lot of people will probably make is not countersinking that screw enough that's holding the plexiglass. So we're going to adjust for that so that this will rest, this 2x4 will rest in there um, nice and even. So the way you do that is you put the 2x4 in and you just um, get it in place and you take a clamp and press up against it. And what that'll do is it'll sink the image of that um, screw into your 2x4 and then you know where to counter or drill a little hole and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, so all I did is I took a little clamp Clamped it on there, and you can see that uh, screw is pressing into the 2x4. So I'll know exactly where I need to hollow out a little bit of space. And then I'll do the same thing over here on the other side, and nobody will ever know that I screwed up. Alright, you can see that nice impression that it left for me, so I'm just going to take the drill and kind of drill that out a little bit, and then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now that that top cross braces in you only put two screws in you put them into the wood not through the plexiglass because this is about half covering plexiglass so what you want to do is take this eight and a half eight and three eighths oh this piece that fits in between the two whatever your dimensions are and we're gonna pre-drill holes because we have to pre-drill all holes that go through plexiglass and importantly we're gonna drill along here and along here we're not gonna drill any holes here so in terms of where we're putting screws, it's one, two, three on this piece of wood. So we'll do that now. And when you pre-drill your holes, you want to pre-drill them just so they go through this 2x4 and through the plexiglass and into the other 2x4, but that's about it. And then you'll let the screw sink into the, the end of those 2x4s and uh, secure it in place. Okay, and then you do the same thing on the other side and you've got your door all framed in. Last thing that you need to do is I drill a couple of holes through here to secure this and do the same thing on the bottom so your plexiglass is kind of tied up against the wood there. You don't have to countersink these screws on this side because the frame goes up against there, the top goes up against there, so there's nothing really touching those screws. And so you don't have to countersink them, they don't have to be flush and level. And that's what it'll look like so you'll be able to see right into your hive. Okay, when you paint, you can paint the entire hive stand. I don't paint these inside corners here uh, because they might, you know, touch the inside of the hive. But most of this stuff um, up here is unpainted, and then everything outside is painted.
All right, and the last thing we're going to do to the base is we're going to put some grip tape on there. And this is just one inch grip tape. You can get it at any hardware store in a roll or by the foot. And um, just put it on there and we're all done. And if you've never put grip tape on, it's got this um, backing on it. You just peel it and stick it and then you kind of go along uh, peeling this off and sticking it down as you go, keeping it centered right in the middle of the 2x4 here. And that's all there is to it. Congratulations beekeepers, you've reached the end of the first video in our How to Build the Parkinson Hive series. That's the end of chapter 10 in the build manual. And so as I get more videos, I'll upload them and put links down here so you can easily reference those. And we'll see you next time.